All right, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we are talking about working remotely. Now, that's something that I think we're all pretty familiar with at this point in time. <laughs> uh, I know there's some people working back in the office, uh, but uh, you know there's still a lot of people working from home. Um, so, and of course, there's uh, there's those unique challenges of working from home, uh, as you might hear in my background. Uh, you know, I do have I currently have six kids myself, so it's a little uh, uh, a little interesting and fun for for my my life right now. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you are in similar uh, situations and uh, you know, we're all just making the best that we can of it. Um, so with work in the jig, uh, in terms of working remotely, it's, I would say one of the perfect applications for it because it's not tied down to, uh, you know, any operating system or any kind of application requirements. We just simply work in all of the kind of uh, um, most popular browsers. You know, and so you're able to open up Work Image Jig uh, on any browser. Uh, I happen to be using Chrome here on my desktop, um, but you could also use like your mobile phone, uh, and I'll show you that a little bit later uh, to log in and manage things through uh, a phone interface as well. Uh, but it's still a website that you're accessing, basically. So you're not tied down, like I was saying, to any apps that you'd have to install. Um, so, all right. Well, know that I have kind of a, a chat box over here on my side. So if any questions come up along the way, I'll try to uh, answer them uh, as time permits or when I kind of see that it best fits with the discussion at hand. Um, but I appreciate everybody spending some time uh, joining today. So without further ado, if we're working from home um, or remotely, if you will, um, you know, my preference for using Work in Jig because it is a browser-based application, I recommend picking a browser if you're on like your desktop computer. I recommend picking one browser that does WorkMajig only. If you have that ability, then so like for example, I'm using Chrome. This will be my WorkMajig browser, uh, but maybe I'll use like Firefox uh, or Safari uh, as let's say my my personal browsing uh, browser. So that way, I'm not mixing everything into one browser because I, I see so many times where there's tabs up here there's like literally a hundred tabs <laughs> at the top of your browser and trying to navigate working in jig in a hundred browsers when working in jig works great when you have multiple browser tabs open as well um it can be a little daunting to find which tab you're looking for um now yes yeah, so you can stay in one tab in one browser of working in jig um but that's just kind of my my two cents i'm just throwing out there so i like to just use this browser have the tab set up the way i want uh, I even go into my browser settings. Uh, every browser has this. Uh, I'm not going to go through the full process, but every browser has in their settings where you can kind of um, save all of the tabs you currently have on your browser, meaning, okay, th these are the tabs that I use of work image. You know, th these are my focal points. So I have these tabs preset ready to go. So whenever I open the browser brand new, it loads the tabs for me. So I don't have to go in and uh, navigate to each page, uh, open up a new tab, type in the address again, okay, go to a different page. You know, there's, there's a lot of, it's a big time saver to just have one browser that just sets up and is ready to go. Um, so that's my preference, my two cents of how I like to work uh, here with Workin' Majig. Um, now, some little, little tidbits. So if you're kind of just, you know, new to Workin' Majig or you're trying to kind of get Workin' Majig set up back at, you know, a remote location, you know, you're not at the office now. Um, once you do get logged in, you know, this is the default page we have for everybody, the Today Creatives. Now, I just happen to have this open just because that's that's generally our default page. But you are able to uh, set other pages be your default page. And that might be beneficial for if you're, you know, if you kind of are on the go and you're using a tablet or you're using a phone, you may want to go through and say, well, you know, I, I'm not a creative. I'm like, I'm a salesperson or I'm a project manager. Uh, I need to be aware of different things. Um, so to save you some time from having to navigate to different pages after you load the Today Creative, what you can do is you can click on your name here in the upper right corner, and we have our default page. And so you can say, oh, you know what? That's great. Let me, let me change my default page from Today Creatives, and let's make my default page be, uh, let's just say I am a project manager. So I'll go with Today Project Manager. That way, I'm going to have a page with different alerts. So if I open it up on my phone, for example, uh, it'll just take me right to this page. I don't have to then tab and click and navigate somewhere else. Just take me to where I'm going to want to be uh, if I happen to be on the go. Because when you bookmark these pages, or like I said, when you uh, have that as like your starting pages, they can be different than your default page. So you have that luxury on your own computer to make it custom, uh, where if you're going to work in a jig, uh, our application natively, well, then it's going to result to your default page. 
So a couple of different ways you can kind of think of it and work it. And it's all about streamlining your process, keeping things simple um, and, you know, whatever kind of can keep this you know, process going. OK, now when we are working remotely, um, you know, that that means I can't just go down the hall and talk to my friend or my coworker or whoever. Uh, I have to, you know, I have to now take a little bit more initiative and say, OK, I need to document this discussion. You know, I can't just go down the hall and, and, and have a talk. Um, but even if you did that, I would still say you'd want to document what came out of that. So what we have in Workmajig, it's kind of one of the, one of the core features uh, in terms of just kind of keeping track of all of what's being said and done uh, is conversations. So to, 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 to know conversations a little bit deeper here uh, is a really uh, is, is one of the goals here because conversations can be tied through the whole system, not just projects. So what I mean by that is when we do have, let's say, uh, our today creatives here, you know, I do have the ability to see my tasks. And I'm sure, I hope we're all familiar with, with tasks at this point. <laughs> uh, if we're not, that's a whole different discussion. Uh, but you see your tasks that you're assigned to, you can click on them. And once you click on them, there are conversations at a task level. So you can have conversations at a task level that you, you send to people that aren't necessarily part of this task. Maybe they're not even working on this project, but you have a question that they could answer. So you're able to add conversations at a, at a task level. And you're also able to have those people then respond. So when people are responding to your conversations, for example, down here at the bottom of your task card, it would say there's a new update. And that would let you know, oh, let me click on the information. Oh, there's a new conversation or a new reply. So the system will alert you as things are kind of coming back in uh, based on what you've sent out. Now that's, of, of course, this is all just within Workamajig alone. Uh, so you have lots of functionality in terms of just you know, uh, keeping track of what was said and what the replies were. But I'm sure a lot of you are, are interested in um, like IMs and, and faster conversation, which we, we get and we understand. But at the same time, a lot of times those kind of conversations and like different applications like that, they're a little bit more non-work related. So a lot of times I'm like, do you really want to have all of those conversations stored within Workamajig? You know, potentially not. So a lot of times I'd like to focus on this and say, you know what, let's use conversations and work in Jake for work purposes, meaning let's say focused on the task at hand, uh, keep that going and, and go with that kind of uh, philosophy here. If I have to use something else to have a, a side conversation, okay, go for it. Um, but again, if you don't want those things documented, I would just keep those on the side. Um, but the addition of, of having this information here is not only that, you know, you're able to kind of, you know, work within the system, uh, send questions out, but it's documented. So down the road, if somebody else comes into this project and says, hey, what's been done before me? So you have the ability, for example, to say, well, what were all the conversations prior to me? Oh, there's a whole lot that was said pr prior to me working on this one task. So you can kind of go back through and see all the conversations that have been said up to that point. So again, you know, do you want that to be visible is the first question, <laughs> but it keeps it documented so that way everybody can stay, you know, aware of what's been happening on this potential task or project at that point. Additionally, with conversations, they can uh, be used to be, you know, sent out via email. So by default, um, let me click back in there real quick so you can kind of see this. So when I say a new conversation, uh, there is this email to option right here. So I'm able to say, well, who do I need to alert? Who do I need in a way to tag? Uh, I can click on my email to option and I can kind of go through that process of finding either people that are uh, other employees or staff, uh, certain contacts, you know, so I can add different types of users onto this conversation. And again, that's independent from, well, who's on the project and task. Now there are ways to default from the project team of who gets defaulted into the email to list. So there again, there's going to be a lot of ways to streamline processes. Keep that in mind that, you, you know, if, if you find yourself having to manually add people a lot of times, especially repetitive or the same person, well, there's ways to streamline things like that. And one of that would be to use the team of the project uh, to then, and let me go ahead and show you that. So let's jump into our project dashboard real quick. In the team section of every project, there is a subscriptions tab up here. And so here you have the ability to say, well, let's default all of these people on the conversations we create for this project. 
We also have another setting that you can add. Uh, um, whoever's on the task can get added to the conversation as well. But that's more of like a system level setting. This is just saying a project level setting, you know, per, per project, who do we want to be involved in conversations? Uh, we additionally have to do's. It's kind of like a conversation, but there's a little bit more accountability behind it. So it's a kind of a, more of an advanced functionality. But just know that the subscriptions tab per project is a nice way to kind of manage who should be defaulted in on a conversation without having to manually add people all the time. All right. When these uh, conversations are added, you know, if it's directed to someone else in this case, you know, they would be alerted via email. They would also, if they were on the same task, they would see that there's a new update. So if you have multiple people on, working on the same task, their task card is going to update them that something has changed and that they should take a look. So you can have just simply back and forth just from the Today Creatives alone. But if you do happen to email out, that email will contain a link they can click on that will open up Worker Jig like we see here and it'll open up the conversation and they can simply reply to that conversation. But we do have some uh, system functionality. I'm going to flip over to another tab I have already open here. In our system setup under connections, uh, under emails, we do have the ability to create an incoming email uh, kind of pull down account. So you're able to either use POP or IMAP, connect it to an email account, not your personal email, keeping that in mind. <laughs> You'd wanna create like a system email, you know, call it, uh, you know, conversations, company name at whatever.com. Uh, so, you know, try to make it something that stands out as, hey, we know where that email is coming from simply based on the address. But this way, all these emails can be sent out using that address as a system email. And then when they come, and then when people reply to that email, they reply to this address, which then comes back into Workamajig. So you're able to utilize a, a, an outside email account to facilitate the ability to email out and pull it back in, pull in the replies. And when it, when the system pulls in those replies, it'll, it, you know, as long as you leave the email kind of intact, uh, it'll pull in some, in some additional code that, that tells the system where that reply goes to. And so that reply would automatically show up here. I would see that, oh, they reply, there's an update. Cool. So they could reply by email. They don't even have to be in work -a jig to reply by conversation. So conversation is just, again, there's a very versatile, there's a lot to it. Um, okay. I see two questions here. So I talked about the, the tagging people. Um, we do have like a new uh, function we're working on uh, to, um, if I go back to the new conversation, I don't know if we're going to add it here, but we're adding a new option to um, kind of like type ahead people's names. So you don't have to kind of click through, if you will. Uh, I know that's kind of in the works. And there's another question. Um, are you able to use the subscriptions from a client standpoint? Uh, the AM would be def default to include on all conversation. Okay. Yeah. So that goes back to the team. So on your project team, let's just talk about that real quick. You're asking, you know, how do I default, you know, other people? Uh, so that would be back on that team section. So what this means is if there is a client that you want to be involved on all conversations of this project, well, you have to add them as a contact first. But once, there's a, once they are a contact, you can add them to the project team. And you can say, okay, let me add uh, the, the client contact to this project. Once they're on the project, then they can be involved in conversations and even be defaulted on that. Now, I will say when we're, we are dealing with uh, outside uh, contacts, if I create a conversation so you can kind of see that there, there is a, there's an additional step here. When I create a conversation, you're going to see this option called visible to client. Now, this is my test site, so I have it enabled by default. There's a system setting to make that visible by default. But keep in mind, it's only going to be visible if they're in the email to list. Now, if, I, if by default, that is not checked. So if I try to add a contact on here, once I hit save and this is not checked, the system will, it will remove them from the email to list because we, we chose it to not be visible to them. So it does, it does kind of have a safeguard where, okay, again, this is off by default. So if I add them, I'm gonna to need to make sure that for this one conversation, I make it visible to the client so it does send it to them. So just something to kind of keep in mind. We try to kind of keep that a little safeguarded um, just based on you know, what our client's needs are. Uh, but there is the ability to do that. Now, you do have the ability to also give your clients uh, a, a free user 
uh, login through what we call our, our client portal. Um, and they can then go in there and see this conversation again because it's visible to them. So lots of different ways you can work with clients remotely uh, as well. And again, they don't have to be a full user because uh, they just need to see the information. All right, so that's kind of a, the kind of the start of conversations. Now, what I've been showing you so far is just simply conversations from a project and task level of management. But conversations can be used in other areas of the system as well. So for example, you're gonna notice here in the Today Creatives, you know, you have your tasks. That's, that's your main focus as a creative. But you also have the Conversations tab. Conversations tab is going to show you a couple of different things. So it's kind of a unique view to the Today Creatives. Um, this first tab, Projects. This is going to show you all the conversations that are just happening across all projects that you happen to be on the team of. Now, I don't have anything recently, but I bet you if you were to log into your account, because you're obviously uh, you know, using WorkMajig more than I am in this case, um, you're going to see a whole list of um, conversations here under projects. But that's okay. You know, again, it's just trying to alert you, hey, here's what's going on on projects you're involved with. But there'll be a button that just says, you know, clear these out. So then it'll just reset and anything new from that point on will populate here. So it's just a way to kind of keep abreast of what's going on across all of your projects. Uh, but where we get to these other tabs, this is where it gets a little interesting. So you're able to create conversations outside of projects. Now, this is, was typically reserved for like the sales team, if you will. But it's also a way that, hey, I just want to have something documented in here. It's not necessarily project specific. Maybe it's client specific. Um, you know, maybe there's just some different housekeeping things we need to do um, for different things. So you're able to create conversations um, that are, you know, outside projects. Note that the system, even though it's still a conversation, they get treated differently. So there'll be uh, anytime a conversation is created and assigned to you, you know, it's going to show up here under this conversations tab. So if I were to create a new conversation, for example, I can just hit the plus sign here in my toolbar. And then under everyone, I can click conversation. So I can create a new conversation. And this is kind of the more detailed oriented part of the conversation, because now I can go through and be more methodical. Um, I can, you know, assign it to a specific person. So if I can assign it to a different person here. I'll say, let's assign it to Bruce Willis. Notice how completed then gets unchecked because this is for somebody else's eyes, not just mine. So you're able to create conversations that are going to somebody else will show up on their conversations uh, page in their today page. Um, I could email them in as well. So I can kind of make sure to get the word out uh, on this information. But know that you can only assign it to one person even though you can email it to multiple people. So it just creates you know, some interesting scenarios of how do I wanna manage this? You know, who's responsible versus who needs to be alerted of the back and forth. Now you can see I can link it to a lead or a contact or a company. It doesn't even have to be to a project. I could just link it at a certain level of the system. Uh, so that way that's where it's going to show. But know that if you create and you link it to a project um, from here manually, it does. it's a little bit different than a conversation at the task level. Uh, so it, it, it may not be as visible per se, uh, just depending on how you set up the rest of this conversation. Okay, uh, some good stuff here. Yeah, now I don't have uh, that, that new feature on, like I was saying, we have that email too, where you can kind of like type ahead with your name up here. Um, I don't have it enabled on my site currently, but we do have a new function that will hopefully make it easier to um, quote unquote, you don't see my, you don't see my air quotes here, uh, but are uh, quote unquote tagging people because I know that's been a big, uh, a big ask. So um, we've added, and hopefully it'll be out uh, in, in general release uh, soon, but then you can just kind of type ahead and, and not have to worry about, you know, doing the, the plus sign, you know, clicking around, searching. So hopefully that'll make things uh, a little bit easier on that front. All right, let's kind of close out of this. So now you do have these tabs of conversations. You got what's open. Um, it does say, well, if you assign something that's dated today um, or it's past today, it's gonna show in this today column. You know, there's of course this week, uh, unread favorites. You know, you can make a favorite if you want and kind of track some of them, but it's just kind of a, a, a interesting way to kind of organize it. Now, again, a lot of times these conversations, these are really more geared towards, again, like a salesperson, maybe a project manager, maybe even accounting. Um, creatives, I would say focus more on your tasks. You know, focus at the task level. You know, you'll see your task cards. I'll let you know if there's an update. Um, click on your task card. 
and you can manage and see conversations relating to your specific task. So lots of ways um, you can you can use conversations in this respect. Again, you know, think of think of other ways we can use it to be remotely working. Where okay, I get my email on my phone, but I can't open up WorkMajig for whatever reason. You know, I just really quick just want to reply. You know, then definitely look into setting up this uh, incoming and outbound email uh, setup. That will give you a lot more flexibility and a lot more um, workflow there. Now, what's neat with, with having this uh, setup is I could email this email address directly. So again, if make it something that everybody kind of knows what the email. If I know this email address, I could actually send an email into WorkMajig just by simply sending an email there. But if I do that, it's going to kind of go into the void. It's going to be in a uh, general area, you know, of you'd have to go search through the conversations um, to find it, you know, because it's not like tagged to anything. Um, so what you would need to do then is when you send an email directly to that account, uh, you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to know what the, the, the project number is. In this case, 16-00006. And so when you send an email to that email address, not on the subject, oh, let me copy that number real quick, actually. And again, this is why it's probably better to start off the conversation working with you anyway, but you'd have to remember it. And then in the body of your email, you can do double square brackets with the project number in the middle. That right there will tell the system if you email that address, hey, put this conversation into that project. So again, I know some people are just kind of on the go and they know their project numbers by heart. And so they might create an email, uh, again, send it to your incoming email address, but in the body of that email, you know, have double square brackets with the project number, send it, and then that's going to go into the conversations of that project. And again, whoever is also defaulted from the team of that project conversations will get the email as well. So the, you're kind of letting the system direct where the email should go uh, versus you having to decide who to send it to. So again, lots of ways to streamline this and kind of get it going. All right, let me let back out of here. Uh, so other ways to kind of collaborate just at a task level. Again, we're, you know, we're all working remotely. And even if we're in the same office, you know, we're still working at, at separate desks. So not only are conversations good for that, but deliverables are good for that. Now, I'm not going to go into deliverables. It's a whole other uh, piece of the system. But within a deliverable, you do have the ability to have a conversation at the deliverable level. So that way, not only is this conversation tied to this project per se, but it's really more tied to uh, this deliverable. So I can be more strategic of where I'm placing these conversations and what they relate to. Now, of course, with deliverables, again, I don't want to get into deliverables heavy, but there, there is your review rounds where you can turn comments into to-dos. And again, those to-dos do act like a conversation because I can email people on these ones. I can have them in a notify list. They could actually reply by email too. Um, so there's a lot of functionality in here, but to-dos is more like, think of it like an, an advanced conversation, but it's still very much project focused and related. Okay. Now you're going to see conversation tabs kind of throughout the system. Uh, so for like accountants, if you happen to be like opening up an invoice, uh, you'll actually see like a conversation uh, tab, like in the bottom corner of the invoice. Uh, so you can kind of document some notes there. Lots of ways, lots of ways you can use the system here. All right. Uh, another aspect of conversations is we can actually tie it kind of into a meeting. So a meeting is a great way to kind of, again, work remotely, collaborate, because we can go and say, hey, we have a, you know, let's meet today. Let's meet at noon. Um, on this uh, particular meeting, hey, uh, great. What we can do with these meetings, if you didn't know, is if you can edit the meeting and assign it to a project and task. So that way, if this, if this meeting happens to pertain to this task, well, great. On that particular task, I can, when I go to this meeting, I mean, I can add a new conversation. Now, keep in mind, I'm not adding a conversation to the meeting, it actually knows what task and project it's for. So I, it, it's actually creating a conversation for this very task over here. So it's kind of a cool way to just say, hey, from this meeting, as long as we kind of just make sure to that just be kind of the rule of thumb is whenever you create a meeting, link it to a specific project and task, because that way we can get other benefits of that conversation function. So if anybody has a question about this meeting, they could always just add a new conversation and know that it's going to be directed towards that project and task 
that uh, they were expecting. All right. Um, I got another couple of questions here. So uh, integrations with other systems at this time, we're not looking into that um, because you could have those open as a, another browser tab. Uh, you could just have it as another application on the side. Uh, so, you know, you could just kind of tab between uh, different applications and and get your conversations that way, because like I was saying earlier, if, you know, a lot of times what I've I've had discussions with clients of saying, do you really want to have all of those discussions as conversations stored in Workamajig forever? <laughs> the, the answer I get back a lot of times is no, because a lot of those conversations that you may have in these you know, like instant, you know, IM applications uh, are more, you know, off topic. And so we don't necessarily need to keep those in Workamajig. So a lot of times we'll keep the off topic stuff, you know, um, in other conversation tools, uh, but anything that's definitely project specific, let's get that in Workamajig. Uh, so I had a question about the brackets. Uh, Workamajig automatically does organize the conversations based on where they're placed in the conversations. I've never had a, well, correct. If you're replying back to a conversation that, that, you, that was sent to you, Yes, in that email, it does have, like I said, it has that code, so it knows where that reply email should go. The, the double square brackets is only used if you're going to send a brand new email into Workamajig. But again, you, are, you have to know the project number in advance. So sometimes it's kind of funny that, well, if you don't know the project number, well, then you got to go into Workamajig to then add the conversation. So you might as well just add it in Workamajig natively anyway. But like I was saying, I know some clients, they just know their project numbers by heart. And so they'll just shoot an email into the system um, with that project number and double, double square brackets in the body, not the subject, in the body of the email. And that's just a way to kind of throw a, a conversation real quick back into Workamajig. But that's a brand new email. All right. Um, so hopefully we've gone over the conversations aspect quite a bit. Um, we can revisit this as well. But let me go to some other areas of the system that may be beneficial for working remotely. We have our notes tab. Now notes, uh, if you haven't seen this, is located from the main menu uh, under everyone and there is notes. Now there are some security rights behind this or some permissions. So if you're not seeing this, speak with one of your uh, local work imaging administrators um, to get help on getting that enabled. But notes is a really great aspect here because you can create uh, company notes that you know you can, as the administrator can make that other people cannot edit but they can make their own personal notes if they want. So under the company section, you know, I have like, oh, well, don't forget to enter your time daily. You know, always good instruction. <laughs> uh, company extensions, like I just kind of threw like a quick list of, hey, here's the, here's the people to call in case of such and such. Uh, you know, what are your company holidays? You know, it's good to have this visible for all your clients. Uh, I'm sorry, all your employees, just so they can kind of uh, self-serve, not have to send you an email every time. Hey, when's our next holiday? You know, we can just have them listed here. You do have the ability, I just have this one uh, uh, category here, just simply called links. And there's just a, a, a link. Uh, it is a hyperlink. Um, so you can create links from here to get to, maybe we have like a, um, a document share server where we have like a, you know, a legal document for people to, you know, fill out for whatever PTO or, um, you know, just to check off that they've, you know, seen the updates or who knows, whatever. Um, you can also add links to other parts of Workamajig from in here. So it's, it, it gets really interesting when you uh, kind of, you know, put a URL in here, um, you could add things like that. Now you can, of course, edit the URL. So you can see I, I have the word link, even though it actually is a different, um, you know, it's a full URL behind it. You just can't see it here because I've already edited it. Uh, but once you do paste a, a URL, you can, it'll be blue and you can just edit it to be whatever you want it to say. So you don't see the URL address. So, uh, but just a, a neat way to just kind of organize things company-wide uh, just so that way everything is available to your users. Um, because again, if we're all working remotely, we need a place to go to find things, you know, and what better place to kind of document everything here uh, and have it available for everyone to use. All right. Uh, going back to my next tab here. So we're talking about that kind of, again, the, the, the incoming outbound emails. Um, this is definitely a more of a advanced administrator setup. So if you have questions on this, uh, definitely speak with your administrator, but very, I, I, I can't stress enough, do not use your email, your personal email address. We even like put it here as a warning. Um, the reason for that is if you were to connect your email address here, uh, every single email in your inbox will be pulled into Workmajig for everybody to see. And you probably don't want that. Uh, 
So uh, don't use your email address here. <laughs> Make a brand new one just for the company use. All right. Um, also in our system setup, so there's connections. But we do have some other options in terms of, well, how do we want the system you know, messaging us? So in our transaction preferences, uh, we do have our notification options. And so I do have the ability to, to, to kind of break out how certain um, notifications operate. So we do have like daily emails. You know, this is kind of, you know, alerts that you get generally from the system. Uh, new records, you know, if you're set up for, you know, getting an email of, hey, there's new projects added, there's new clients added, you know, how do you want those? So you're going to see there's the option of, well, email it to me only uh, or system message or both. Well, you may be asking, well, what's a system message? So if I have things going to system messages instead of emailing me, because I don't need the system emailing me these kind of like just informal things every now and then, um, that just you're, you're eventually going to get annoyed of that and probably filter it out of your inbox and spam it. So make them a system, system message. System messages, you're going to see up here in your toolbar, as you can see, I got uh, a lot of, I got a high number up there. So I'm not very good at uh, staying on top of my items, unfortunately. But if I click on my notification bell up here, you know, you can see things like items to approve, you know, credit card charges, all kinds of things. But if I scroll down a bit, I get to this message section. So this is where if, if I say, hey, send me a system message. Uh, okay, cool. All those emails that I would normally be getting in my email inbox are now just gonna, going to appear here. So now I have the ability to go, oh, hey, there, there's a, oh, I forgot my timesheet. Oh, whoops, let me go work on that. Um, now note that if you click on this, it'll actually open up the email, but it also clears it from that list at the same time. So I have question, if I wanna see that uh, message, oh, okay, that's what it's about, great. But you can see that this thing piles up, especially since this is just my test account. You know, I can say, you know what, just go ahead and clear all. Um, I'll deal with that all later. But I have the ability to say, oh, let me search through my emails that uh, the system has sent me. So if, you, you know, if you're ever concerned of, hey, I'm not getting these emails from Workamajig or, uh, hey, I, I'm just trying to find it, um, you can go in here and search for your past notifications and kind of put in like a keyword and say, hey, I think, I, I think it was sent sometime this month. You know, so, you know, show me a keyword. Let's look for... Uh, time this month. Oh, okay. Here's all my missing time. Oops. You know, I got to stay on top of that. <laughs> so we do have the ability to kind of find all the system messages that the system has been sending you. But again, we have that kind of control. Do we want to just it, go to system message only, email or both? Now, things that are important like approvals, you can see I sent that to both because I want to stay on top of that. But everything else, even conversations, because the amount of conversations going back and forth could be quite a lot. So I may just turn that into a system message only because I know it's going to add to my number up here that, hey, I got something to, to look at. Look, you can see my number went way down up there. Now, we, I don't know if I should spill the beans too much on this, but we are working on some um, real-time notifications as well. Uh, so that way there's not a, a delay in being alerted of certain items. Um, but I, I sh probably shouldn't say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we have some good stuff coming up uh, in terms of, again, these notifications being quicker uh, than they are now. Uh, but this is just a system level setting of how you want certain things to operate. Um, again, it's all kind of in conjunction with how you want these things to work. Now, when you go through this list here and you start seeing things like, oh, well, new projects, oh, spec sheets, clients, you know, um, missing time, all these things. Note that these notification options are controlling those, but they still have to be set up at certain levels of the system. So depending what type of notification it is, uh, it may be something you have to set up elsewhere in transaction preferences. But a lot of times you would actually have to go to now your employee records. And in your employee records is where there's a notification section itself to say, hey, this employee needs to be alerted of you know, projects where the project's ass changes. So I'm gonna say, hey, this, this person needs to be aware of all of the projects that they are the account manager of. You know, I want them to get an alert anytime project status changes. But maybe I only want those types of alerts to go to their system message. I don't need it to email them. So again, you can see there's a combination of ways to set things up here. But a majority of the conversations are gonna be user notifications yet you enable or set here. All right, uh, the last thing I'm gonna to touch on here today then is the mobile interface. So if we are on the go, I'm gonna click on my last tab here. If we are on the go, you might see something like this. 
Uh, you know, this may be a little bit older iPhone, but you know, it works for the presentation purposes. Um, but this is what your, the mobile interface would look like. Now you may, may be asking, well, how do I get to this mobile interface? Well, it just simply uses your phone's browser. How, but how to make the phone browser kind of look like an app um, is a little bit unique. So if you're on uh, an Apple phone, iPhone, um, know that only Safari browser is allowed to create um, an, an app icon. So you're able to actually log into WorkmanJig through like Safari, you know, type in the address in the web browser and it'll take you to, you know, your login, your default page, uh, something like this. And then there'll be another option, like the three dots at the top there. And you can say, you know, turn into, you know, um, I forget what it's called, like a, a, you know, app icon or something like that. So only on the iPhone, I've noticed you can only do this with um, Safari. So while you can install Chrome and Firefox, you can't make an app icon on iPhones, unfortunately. Now, if you're on an Android phone, you can do it with any browser. Um, the benefit of, of going through and creating an app icon on your phone for this is the URL, the URL address will be hidden. So essentially it makes it look like an app because it's, it, it just stays within WorkimageJig only. So you're not able to manually pick a different address um, while you're in this application. So it's kind of a cool way to do it because then it feels more like an app installed instead of just being a web browser. Okay, now once you do have, uh, you know, you are on your phone, for example, uh, you know, the interface, of course, it's, we had to, you know, readjust things to make it fit on a phone screen. Uh, unlike, you know, your desktop screen, we got, you know, plenty of screen space. So every screen is going to be a little bit different. And just note that, you know, mileage may vary on options. Because again, we, we had to kind of try to fit the best we could into this size. So when you're on like the Today Creative, for example, you know, I can kind of scroll through my list of my assigned tasks. So you kind of lose some of that you know, functionality, if you're used to using like the assignment management screen or the list view, you know, um, just know in the mobile view, you know, it's, it's, it's restricted to just the, uh, the card view only. But you can see I have the ability to access my conversations here. Now, my conversations happen to be blank uh, on, on this particular uh, screen. That's because, it, again, it's streamlined. You know, mileage may vary. So the only conversations that show up here when you're on your phone interface are new conversations, unread conversations. So everything else, um, you know, it, it's going to be a different experience depending on what browser you're on, or I'm sorry, what interface you're kind of uh, reacting with. Now on this, on this mobile interface, you know, I do have the ability to say, hey, well, I still want to create a conversation, you know, okay, well, you can still do that. You can go to your task card, for example, just click on your task card, the information slides out, and you are then able to um, look at your, oh, I was trying to see what my conversations went. Okay, maybe I don't have to do it that way. I apologize. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go up here. Uh, so you, you click the blue three dots at the bottom. And then you're able to get this plus sign here at the top. And that's where you can create a new conversation. Plus, I was going to say while you're here, uh, a lot of people when they're out and about, you have the ability also to create a new expense report. So if you happen to be out and about and okay, you're just you're at a restaurant, and you're buying supplies, who knows? So you can say, hey, let me just fill out an expense report real quick. Let me add my new expense report. Let me fill it in. Here's the amount. And if you scroll down or swipe up, um, there'll be an attachment button. And because you're on your phone, when you, when you tap on that, uh, it should open up your camera or at least prompt you to open up a camera or look for a file. So it'll, it'll be based on how your phone functions of handling that request. But that way you can just take a screenshot real quick, add it, fill in the information, save it, and it's on its way. So kind of neat, neat little things you can kind of do uh, utilizing uh, the phone interface in this respect. All right, well, that is what I have for the moment. I was hoping to have a, uh, a little bit longer of a discussion, but uh, went through everything pretty quick. So I'll, I'll leave it open here just for a few moments. If anyone has any uh, last minute questions here. Feel free, oh, so it looks like somebody's using the QA section. Um, it looks like it's just kind of the same as uh, some of the questions that were asked in our chat box here, but there's one more here. Uh, let's see, someone was asking, can you set up the same names people as the default on a template? So I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean exactly in that question. Um, the, the teams categories on projects 
is actually pulling from the setup of the users. Um, so if you put people on the team of a project, they will copy into the new project, but the subscription checkboxes do not. So that's a good question. So let me let me show you something real quick. Um, so we'll go back to our employee record. And in your employee record, under projects and time, there are, there's this subscribe to and, and deliverables. Now, the, normally I don't I don't show this because the the, the challenge here is we, we tend to get a lot of emails saying, hey, this person keeps getting subscribed. How do I unsubscribe them? So a lot of times I don't show this right off the bat just because then it creates emails down the road. <laughs> but uh, what you could do is say, hey, whatever Bruce is added to a project, um, automatically check project conversations in the team. And again, that was what I was referring to earlier about streamlining the process. Uh, you can get people added uh, as a default based on you know just simply what they have set here. So it, lots of cool ways. Uh, I, I'm all about streamlining. You know, kind of you know utilizing uh, multiple features to really get the system to just kind of come together. And th that will definitely help you, especially working remotely, kind of keeping everything in, in, in play without having to kind of do a lot of manual work to, you know, connect things. So, all right. No, definitely some great questions. Uh, I appreciate everyone's time here. Uh, I'm not seeing any other questions come in here. So I'll go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, but definitely thank you for your, your time. And uh, if you have any other questions or follow-ups to this, uh, please just shoot an email to uh, support at workimagejig.com. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day.